What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, back with another Week 8 college football preview. We're moving to the SWAC today. We got two big games to talk about, starting today with Bethune-Cookman traveling down to Jackson, Mississippi to take on Jackson State. 1 p.m. Central Time kickoff live on ESPN+. Plus. Go ahead and pay. I think that's just like $6.99. Go ahead and get that so y'all can stream this game this weekend. But we have an interesting swag matchup. Now, interesting might not be the word some people would use to possibly describe this game. But for me, we just have two teams on two very different trajectories right now, which means that this matchup not only could have SWAC championship implications for a team like Jackson State, but also hot seat implications with Sims down at Bethune. But also it could be a chance to, you know, for Bethune to get their first win of the season in impressive fashion. I mean, you could you could argue that if you could just get like one win this season, it'd be Jackson State on the road. I mean, what would that do for the program moving forward this season? So we have big implications this weekend, but we'll start with the Tigers in terms of setting the table here that they come in at five and one undefeated in SWAC play right now, coming off an impressive win over Alabama state in which they had a record crowd, you know, load the vet, but they have to avoid multiple trap games. Now they have teams up on their schedule that they should be better than on paper by a significant margin but they can't get caught looking ahead to the end of the season where they get two of the top teams in there in that cross division in Southern and Alcorn. They have to take these next few teams seriously and make sure they don't get caught looking ahead and get caught in a real trap game, which we have seen all throughout college football this year. But this week is going to be interesting. Coach Prime is out due to his foot uh, surgery. And right now running back coach uh, Gary Harrell will be the interim head coach this weekend. We'll see how the Tigers respond, but I'm imagining they should be focused. They should be wanting to get a big win for their head coach, which will not be in attendance this weekend. But on the other side, the Wildcats come in at a completely opposite spectrum. 0-7, 0-4 in conference, and they but they've lost four of their seven games by less than 10 points, and they're looking to change their misfortune with a huge upset in Jackson this weekend that – really could not only shake up the swag, but I mean, you would you could make an argument as one of the biggest upsets of the season thus far. But this is only the second time these programs have ever faced in school history. I mean, 2019, Bethune came away with a 36-15 win in Atlanta. But back, going back to that game, these two teams are in a very different spot than they were two years ago. So this is only the second matchup. Jackson State's looking to avenge that early loss in 2019 to them. This this is going to be a very, very important game for Jackson State moving forward. But for the keys to the game, for Jackson State, it should be obvious to me. If you've watched this team at all, this offense has taken their game to an entirely new level under T.C. Taylor's play calling, and it all starts with that rushing attack for me. When they, when they can run the football, this offense just – it has an entirely new level that they really didn't unlock till he took over the play calling. These past two games have been so impressive. When you look, they only averaged 51 yards rushing per game on the ground early this season through the first four weeks, and then they're rushing for almost 200 yards per game over these past two weeks against Alabama State and Alabama A&M. And for me, it's going to be a key because Bethune's defense is allowing over 200 yards per game on the ground at almost five yards per carry for the entire season. It's all going to start with Santee Marshall, who will probably be the lead guy again this weekend, over 300 yards rushing, three touchdowns. And has had two back-to-back -back big performances for the Tigers. And then J.D. Martin is starting to kind of carve his role out in this offense. He has two rushing touchdowns, almost 100 yards on the season. These guys are going to be the focal point of this rushing attack for JSU. Once Taylor kind of took over the play call, and you can tell they went to some of these more athletic backs that can make plays in space, hit the hole more efficiently, and Peyton Pickett really hasn't seen the field as much. You know, there's been some rumors that he could be a bit banged up, but we'll see if they utilize him in red zone opportunities moving forward, you know, under TC Taylor's play calling. But even with that rushing attack, man, look, we got to give the kid his props, man. Shador Sanders has played outstanding this season. And with this rushing attack, it's allowed Shador to really settle into his game more. 
he doesn't have that pressure of having to carry this offense like he did over the first four weeks of the season. He's still completing almost 70% of his passes, over 1,500 yards passing, 13 touchdowns, an interception, still has those two touchdowns on the ground. But right now in the SWAT, guys, he ranks second in passing yards per game, number one in passing efficiency, number one in completion percentage, and also number two in passing touchdowns. But the number one thing that I don't think any stat line can tell you, if you watch these games, the number one attribute um, attribute for Sanders, especially with how the O-line has been playing, is his pocket presence. You have to give him his props with, behind, a, I would say, an average O-line at best. He has shown, in a, he's shown in a unique ability to not only escape pressure, but do it creatively and still make plays down the field. And that's what separates him from not only other QBs in the conference, but just other freshmen in the country is how calm he can stay under pressure and how he he can get out of he can get out of danger in so many different ways, whether it be with his legs, stiff arm, a spin move. Like he knows where he is in space at all times, and he knows how to utilize the pressure of the defense for, into his turn it into his advantage. And that's really where Shador has shone this season, and that's going to be a key this weekend too. All he has to do, like I said, I've said it week in and week out. Shador doesn't have to throw for four or 500 yards in a game. He can throw for 200, a handful of touchdowns. Don't turn the ball over. Get the ball to your playmakers. Just play point guard with that quarterback spot, and you're going to win the game. That's all Shador Sanders has to do. He doesn't have to go out and do anything over the top. Just play within yourself. Play within the offense and do what you've been doing, and Jackson State is going to be fine this weekend. But for the Wildcats, it's a little more complicated for me they have to be balanced on the offensive side of the ball. That's the key for me because as we've seen week in and week out, becoming one dimensional against Jackson state is the quickest way to lose a game. That's a death wish against this Jackson state defense. They're too athletic. They're too talented, too experienced in certain key spots to be predictable against them. And then especially at home with all that crowd energy, they're going to be feeding off of it. They're going to be pumped to win a game for their coach. Who's not going to be in attendance. So Bethune has to come out and be balanced. Keep them off balance with the play action. Keep Make sure you can establish some sort of rushing attack, which is something that has really been missing from opponents of Jackson State. Jackson State's done a great job of slowing down the run game. They're going to have to run the ball. So that's why, for me, it all starts with the rushing attack right now. When you look at every game that Bethune has had the chance to win, they've had a very strong rushing attack. When you look at the A&M game, almost 150 on the ground. South Carolina State over 200 yards rushing, and last week against Prairie View, they put up over 240 on the ground. It all starts with Kushan Bird, 505 yards rushing, over six yards per carry and five touchdowns. And then you also got the rotational piece in Jimmy Robinson, 114 on the ground with three touchdowns. Now what's missing, so I don't know how many people have been kind of keeping up with Bethune this year, but this quarterback change they made, about two, three weeks ago, has really given this offense another dimension with quarterback Devin Black, who is really a dual-threat guy and can make plays outside the pocket. Black has rushed for over 250 already in his limited action, over 11 yards per carry, and a rushing touchdown. He's topped over 50 yards the past three games, including a 131 performance against South Carolina State. This is one thing that Jackson State really hasn't been tested with as a guy who can get out the pocket and make plays. Black is going to have to be dynamic outside the pocket, make some plays down the field, and if Jackson State gets some pressure, can he turn You know what would have been against some of these other opponents a big sack? Can he escape and turn it into a positive, make it a no game, live to, live to fight another day pretty much? That's going to be the question. But putting Black in over you know what they were having – for me, was a huge change in this Bethune offense and gives it another wrinkle that could really test Jackson State this weekend. Now, the passing game has been inconsistent due to turnovers, really. Yes, they're averaging over 230 through the air right now, but you're looking at this at this at this quarterback battle. You know, Black's already thrown two interceptions. Shannon Patrick threw seven before he was benched. They're both completing under 55% of their passes. So that's going to be where they're going to have to play better. Jackson State still doesn't have a pick this year, but if you they have the talent in the back end of the defense where if you just throw it up or make a bad read, they can make you pay. 
And on the back end, you look at, you know, Nugget Warren. If you give him some open space, he's going to take it back for six. So you cannot, you know, be just – you can't be reckless with the ball. You have to make plays and take some risk if you're Bethune because you're the underdog. But you've got to take calculated, smart risk. Now, the biggest difference between Patrick and Black is Black's averaging over almost 10 yards per attempt, while Patrick really had problems kind of pushing the ball down the field against better competition. So Devin Black is really going to be the key, but let's go to the X factor, man. We, when we talk about this passing attack, y'all know what it is when it comes to Bethune. It's Kamari um, Averett at that tight end spot. He's been the top target for this offense, regardless of who the quarterback is. And he has over double the catches of the next closest wide receiver for this Wildcat offense. You know, you look at Averett, 35 catches for over 650 yards, almost 20 yards per catch and six receiving touchdowns. He leads the, he leads the SWAC in receiving yards. He's second in the SWAC in receiving touchdowns and fourth in the SWAC in catches. The closest person to him is Daryl Powell, which is also going to be a guy to watch with 214 on 13 catches and a touchdown. So Kamari Averett is the entire offense for Bethune right now. If Bird and him can get going, that's going to be something to watch. But to see how Jackson State handles him is going to be interesting. Who do you put on him? Because right now, based on everything we've seen, he's too big for a true corner but he's also just as athletic and just as physical as any safety you could put on him, and he's too athletic for most linebackers. So I'm really interested to see who Jackson State trusts to be one-on-one -on -one with him if they put him out in the slot. We're going to see, and I'm very interested to see how the Jackson State defense does that because they have probably the best athletes that this Bethune offense has seen on the defensive side of the ball. So to see how they utilize him and to see – you know who they try to who they try to pick on because the offense can bring them in motion and put them in awkward spots to give him the best one on one matchup. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Bethune uses Averett this weekend. But the number one thing for the Wildcats is explosive plays for me. Nobody outside of a handful of plays has been able to be explosive against this Jackson State defense that plays very consistent defense. But Bethune Cookman is averaging the second most yards per play this season in the SWAC with over six yards per play, only behind Southern right now. So if you're able to be explosive, get a few quick, you know, if you can get quick drives, get a two play touchdown drive, three play on a big play, that's going to put pressure on this Jackson State offense to go down and score. No one has been able to put pressure on Jackson State to go down and score all season long. So being explosive for Bethune Cookman is going to be another key this weekend. Now for my matchup to watch real quick, man, it's got to be the Bethune Cookman offensive line against the D line of Jackson State. If Bethune is going to have any chance of pulling the upset, they are going to have to win the line of scrimmage battle. That's even if they want a chance, because if they can't protect Black and they can't establish the run with Bird, Jackson State is running away with this one and it's not even going to be close. Now, this Bethuno line has been solid at times this season, but they're going to have to have their most impressive and efficient game of the year. They have to communicate. They have to pick up blitzes, and they're just going to have to play scrappy football because they know they're going to be at a disadvantage because of some of the athletes Jackson State has on the D-line. But they've, only, they've allowed a sack in all but one game this season, and they've only allowed 13 sacks this season with over 35 tackles for loss. They're going to have to put together one of their best performances of the season because when you look at Jackson State, they have, a, they have two or more sacks in every game but one, which was last week against Alabama State, but they got over 27 sacks this season and almost 60 tackles for loss, and it all starts with James Houston. He's going to be the player to watch on this front seven like he always is. Eight sacks this season is only one of two SWAC players averaging over a sack a game. The leader, of course, Isaiah Lamb for FAMU. And then at the linebacker spot, Aubrey Miller ranks third in the SWAC with five sacks this season. Is going to be another guy to watch in the front of the Jackson State defense. Bethune is going to have to limit pressure on Black, and they're going to have to establish some sort of rushing lanes for, for Bird, or Jackson State is going to absolutely just, this game will be over by the third quarter. Now, looking at everything, man, my final prediction here, as great as ever it is, I wish he was on a better team. I'm going to be honest with y'all. 
I just think right now Jackson State's too strong. Jackson State's playing too good. I don't think Bethune's going to be able to stop the run game. Shador's going to be able to uncork some things late. And so for me, I got Jackson State pulling away with this one in Jackson, 38-10 to 10 over Bethune-Cookman. I think they get a late touchdown to, you know, at least at least put up double digits. But I got the Tigers 38, Bethune 10. So, guys, make sure to comment your score predictions below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure to comment your takeaways of the game. And if y'all are going, man, be safe down there in Jackson. We'll definitely be watching up here. But, guys, for right now, the Blue Bloods are out.